Hi, Alex here. I'm the head of JavaScript Editor programming team and version 13, which is the major upgrade, is all about making WordPress development easy. So if you're developing or considering developing WordPress plugins and themes, there are six mechanisms by which JavaScript Editor now supports it. And the six are templates, IntelliSense, autocomplete, popping WordPress function parameter lists, applying ready-to-use solutions, and finally, the ability to instantly obtain help on over 2,500 functions that you can use that belong to WordPress. Why are we supporting WordPress? Well, here are some facts. WordPress is installed on 60.6% .6 of all websites that are running non-content management systems. 48% of Technorati's top 100 blogs are managed with WordPress. There are 74.6 million websites worldwide that use WordPress. There are 37 million WordPress-related keyword searches every month, and the word WordPress alone receives over 450,000 exact matches every month. WordPress gets 446 million searches per year. That's one and a half times of the entire population of United States. WordPress has been translated to over 40 languages. There are six new WordPress posts on WordPress.com alone every second, which amounts to over 20,000 posts per day or 7.5 million posts every year. WordPress developers typically charge $50 per hour, and developing WordPress themes and plugins is a multi-billion dollar business. When it comes to JavaScript Editor, more than 10,000 people have purchased the license, and by popular demand, as of this version, we are now fully supporting WordPress development. And without further ado, let's just create a simple WordPress plugin. I could start by going to uh, Insert Template, which is the fastest way uh, to have a head start, or I could just type WP and hit um, our control space, which is going to activate the listing of all the templates that are matching uh, the first couple of characters. And uh, let's choose this one, WP Plugin. I'm going just to call it um, my plugin. As the uh, URL to the plugin, I'll uh, for now, I'll, I'll just put the uh, HTTP. Uh, for now, I'm just going to put the name of my website, which is uh, c-point.com or c-point.com. And I can use the same URL as the uh, author URL, plugin description. Well, I'll just put my plugin. Let's have one space here. Plugin version, well, this is 0.1, we are just starting. Plugin author, I'll put Alex, hit OK. And well, this is basically all you need for a simple plugin. Well, it's not going to do anything useful, but it's a plugin. And when we save it, it's going to be listed in the list of plugins. Let's save it. I'm going to uh, click on Save. And uh, I'm going to put it on my C drive. Now, let's create a new folder and let's call it uh, my plugin. And the plugin that I'm going to put in there is going to have the same name. So it's going to be my plugin.php. And we hit save. Next, I'm going uh, to switch to my WordPress, and I'm just going to refresh the list of plugins that I have over here. Uh, well, uh, my plugin has now been listed over there. When I click on Activate, the plugin is there. It has been activated, and it is now showing in the list of plugins. It doesn't do anything useful, but this is something that we will address in the next video. In the previous video, I created a plugin, but it doesn't do anything useful yet. So let's make it do something useful. How about creating a shortcut that is going to display today's date? It's a very simple plugin, but it's a start. I'm going to use the template for adding the shortcut. WP, control space, invokes all the templates. 
this is the one that I need and I'm going to uh, call my um, shortcode uh, today's date today's date and I hit OK. The program has created the body of the function that is going to add the shortcode and it also added the shortcode to WordPress and it's called today's date. So let's just put here today's date and save. Okay, if I now go back to WordPress and um, go to my test page. So this, this page is completely empty. Let's just have a look at the page. It's using uh, one of the um, default WordPress themes. So it's, it's really bare bone right now, but it's quite good to be used for testing. The uh, shortcode that we have just created was called today's date. And if I click on update and then refresh my test page, it's going to display the text today's date, which really is not today's date. But at least we know that the shortcode is working and that it is displaying something. If I go back to the code, I can now create a function that is going to display today's date for real. So let's uh, create a variable and I'm going to call it today. And I'm going to call the uh, date function and the format that I need is going to be month, day, and year. Okay, and we are just going to return this today, um, today variable, or rather we are going to return what that variable has stored because that's how uh, this today's date function is going to be used. So if I now save this and um, go back and do the reload. The shortcut is now displaying today's date. In the previous video, I created a simple today's date shortcode that displays today's date. Now we will be looking at other shortcodes that are more useful, but before that, let me just tell you what are the other mechanisms that JavaScript Editor uses to support your coding and make it a breeze. To do that, I'll just open a, a completely blank document and show you what I mean. You have already seen some of the templates and how they work, but a JavaScript editor also has IntelliSense that is built in. If I just start typing uh, the name of a function, for example, um, add action, IntelliSense will pop up and allow you to do the autocomplete to speed up your coding. Then when you open the bracket, it is going to pop the WordPress function parameter list that tells you what is that you are supposed to put in there. In this case, there are four parameters that can be applied, tag, function to add priority and the accepted arguments. You should keep in mind that WordPress has more than 2,500 functions that you can use and remembering them or what a function can do or what the parameter list is would be a daunting task. Luckily, you don't have to remember any of this. If you see a function, but you're not sure what it does, all you have to do is to put your pointer over it and to hit um, Shift F1. F1 is normally reserved for, for help, but if you just hit F1, you're going to, to get help on JavaScript and JavaScript functions. Shift F1 gives you the help on all the WordPress functions. So in this case, what I did was um, just to put my pointer over here and um, uh, to uh, hit Shift F1, and that immediately opened up uh, the browser window for me and uh, opened the uh, code reference that uh, describes what add action is. It gives you the additional information about that, uh, how to use it, um, and so on and so forth. And that is all part of WordPress.org and the team of developers of WordPress. Let's go back. And remember, all you need to do is to put your mouse pointer over a function, hit Shift F1, and you're going to get help on over 2,500 functions that belong to WordPress. Let me close this. And before I create another shortcode, let me just tell you that by going to Insert Solution, you can put the entire solutions into your web projects 
and um, augment your um, WordPress development by putting uh, date pickers, buttons, um, using the accordion object, uh, the cookies, making something draggable, making something droppable, adding special effects and so on and so forth. I'm not going to show any details because there is a separate training video that um, uh, talks about the um, interface elements and how to use them and how to add them to your projects. So for now, let's just put in another shortcode. Because I'm going to have more than one shortcode, I'll apply another template over here, which is called um, shortcodes register. And all I need to do is to put a prefix there. It's a good idea to use a unique prefix because that way you are going to avoid the conflict with other plugins that you might have in your system. I'm going to use the name of my company, which is Cpoint and hit OK. And we now have a function called cpoint register shortcodes, which is going to be invoked when the plugin is being initialized. So instead of listing add shortcodes separately, I'm just going to put all of them in here. I'll delete it from there and just put it into register shortcodes. OK, and now we are ready to add more shortcodes. All this shortcode is doing is displaying today's date. But there will be many instances when you want to enclose the content and modify the content so that it does what you want it to do. Let's create another shortcode that is going to do exactly that. Once again, I'm going to use a template for that. And this time I will um, go for the enclosing shortcode. Let's call that shortcode box. And its purpose will be to draw a box around the uh, selected content. OK, we hit OK and we are ready to uh, implement the box shortcode. This add shortcode, I'm just going to move it over here so that um, all of those shortcodes get added and registered at the same time. I'm going to save what I have done up until now. As you can see, there are two more parameters that appear. One of them is the list of attributes, and the second one is the content. That's the selected content. If you just want to do something before and after the content, for example, to make the content bold, all I would need to do would be to put the text before and after, and hit save. And this particular shortcode, the box shortcode, would be making the uh, existing content bold. Let's just check that uh, all of that is working correctly. So we go back here and um, let's put box and slash box. This content is bold. This content is not bold. Update and reload. The shortcode is working, but it is not drawing the box around the content. It's turning the content into bold. So we, we need to modify it so that it does what we want it to do. If I go back and uh, if I get rid of the uh, existing uh, box shortcode, and create a new one. Well, this time I will choose the one with attributes. Again, I'll call it box. We are already adding the shortcode, so we don't need this. OK. Well, here you can see that by default, there are a couple of attributes that we are extracting. And um, the attributes that we might want to use for our box would be, for example, width. And the second one could be height. And how about having one more attribute, which is going to be color. So 
So as the third one, I'm going to put the color and I'm going to give them some default values. So by default, the width is going to be 200 pixels. The height is going to be 100. And let's make it red. Next, we need to construct the HTML that is going to display the box. And that would be something similar to this piece of code. So it would be a div that is of uh, the certain width, certain height, and with a given background color. If I just divide this into two parts that is going to appear before and after the content, we are going to uh, get our box drawn. However, it will be rather inflexible because it has hard-coded values such as 100 pixels, 100 pixels and the background color. Nevertheless, let's save the new version of the plugin and let's go back so that we can uh, change this. This content is in a box. And if I update and reload my page. So what happened here? The box has been constructed, but as I said, it's rather inflexible because it has those hard-coded values. If we use whatever comes in the list of attributes, then we, we are going to make this particular shortcode a lot more flexible. Well, let's do that. So instead of 100 pixels, I'm going to um, delete 100 pixels and instead I'm going to use the variable that we are passing on and instead of using the height I'm going to do exactly the same which means I'm going to pass the height variable And finally, when it comes to the background, the same thing. We are going to pass the color variable. Much better. Quick check. Let's see that our box is still working. Okay, well, this time it's a little bit bigger. Why is it bigger? Because the uh, default width is 200 pixels. Height is still 100 pixels. Let's try passing the parameters, passing the attributes as part of the shortcode. We go back to our page and this time we are going to say this box is going to be with the following attributes. Width is going to be 500 pixels and height is going to be 300 and color is going to be, for example, green. We update the page and we refresh. This is looking good, but the height is not exactly 300 pixels. I forgot to put PX there. So let's update again and let's reload. Well, now we are in business. You have already learned quite a lot. You know how to enclose the content and you know how to pass the shortcode attributes and then manipulate them. In the next video, I will give you the pointers on how to create best-selling plugins that people are looking for and are willing to buy. One great way to create plugins that everybody needs is to look for the work that others have done and done it brilliantly and then to create the wrapper for it. And let me show you what I mean. Here is a little function that I have already created, so I'm just going to paste it in here and it's going to display the exchange rate when you specify two different currencies. WordPress has that wonderful function called WP Remote Get that uh, gets the content of a page that you are looking for. And all you need to do is to format the output then 
so that it does what you need it to do. Now in this case I'm going to um, copy this so that I can just register that uh, as another shortcode. So let's do it. Add shortcode and I'm going to call it for example CX rate. Okay, I have just turned this function into a shortcode and let's copy it so that we can then use it and just get rid of everything that we have here up until this point. And let's use, for example, um, Australian dollars converting to US dollars. update and reload. Well, there you go. As of today, for one Australian dollar, you can get 0.7785 US cents, which actually is rather terrible. Not so long ago, the Australian dollar was stronger than the US dollar, but well, there you go. Things change. Well, let me show you one more example that is going to be more exciting than this one. Google, Yahoo, social media sites and many, many other sites have the software development kits that you can easily tap into to create your WordPress plugins. And in this example, I'm just going to use a very simple Google pie chart. So let's go back to our JavaScript editor and let's create a new function. In fact, I already have it, so I'm just going to uh, copy and paste. What does it do? It displays the chart from Google. It's a pie chart and it accepts several attributes such as uh, the title, the data that is going to go into the chart, colors, labels, the background color, and finally the size. As you can see, we are just creating the image and that image is created by a call to a Google API. API, by the way, stands for the Application Programming Interface. Okay, well, all we need to do is to uh, register this function as well so that we can use it um, as a shortcode. I like doing, I like doing copy and paste, that way it's harder to make a mistake. So how about we call it pie chart? Okay. Save the changes to my page and instead of uh, this uh, currency exchange rate, I have a piece of code that I'm going to copy and paste that is going to display the chart for us. So it's going to be a pie chart. The title is going to be the annual revenue. Here is the size. I'm specifying four different values, one for each quarter. Here are the labels for each of the quarters. So we have first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter. The background is white. And finally, these are the colors that I want to use for each piece of the pie. Let's do the update. And let's reload our test page. And the web page is displaying the chart from Google. 